So hopefully at this point you're feeling pretty comfortable with direct proofs. So now we'll do uh, an example of what's called an indirect proof. And most of our indirect proofs are going to use contraposition, although I'll cover some other, way, other ways of doing indirect proofs in class. So recall that the contrapositive of a conditional statement is logically equivalent to the original conditional statement. And hopefully at this point you're able to move between an original conditional statement and its contrapositive pretty easily. Right? It, if you recall, uh, if the original statement is P implies Q, then the contrapositive is not Q implies not P. So proof by contraposition works uh, by using this theorem that the conditional statement and its contrapositive are logically equivalent to show that the original statement is true by proving that its contrapositive is true. And as you'll see in the next couple of examples, the format of the proof is almost identical to that of identical of the of a direct proof. The only difference is rather than proving the original conditional conditional, we prove the contrapositive. And then we're able to conclude that since the contrapositive is logically equivalent to the original statement, that the original statement is true since the contrapositive is true. So here's our first example. We want to prove the theorem if n squared is odd, then n is odd. Okay. Now if you try to do this directly, you'll see that you're going to run into some problems because you're going to have to try to take the square root determine what n looks like in terms of n squared, and that's going to be, and it, 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 it can be done in some circumstances, but uh, it's, it's tricky. So it's much easier to do an indirect proof. So what do we do? We form the contrapositive. What's the contrapositive? We take the negation of the conclusion. So if n is even, that's the negation of n is odd, then n squared is even. That's the negation of the original premise. And now we just take this contrapositive and now give it a direct proof. So you really know how to do this. So we want to show uh, now that if n is even, n squared is even. So if n is even, then n is equal to 2 times s. n squared is equal to 2 times s times 2 times s, which is equal to 4s squared. Again, justified the same way we've been justifying things. Uh, these kinds of steps. And then we factor out 2, again, by uh, associativity and commutativity. We can factor out that 2. And bingo, what do we have? We have 2 times 2s squared. 2s squared is an integer, so this n squared must be even by the definition of even. So we've proven the contrapositive. Now, this is the one thing you got to remember to do the first step and the last step. Since the contrapositive is true, then the original conditional is true. And so if n squared is odd, then n is odd. One more example of an indirect proof. And this time our theorem is if n is an integer and 3 times n plus 2 is even, then n is even. So what's the contrapositive? The contrapositive is take the negation of the conclusion of the original. If n is odd, then 3 times n plus 2 is odd. Okay, so now again we just do a direct proof on the contrapositive. So let n be odd, then n is equal to 2 times s plus 1, definition of an odd number. Then plug that in to what we're trying to figure out, namely we want to see whether the 3n, 3 times n plus 2 is odd or even. We're trying to show what that's going to be. So we write that out. We plug in uh, this formula for n because n is odd, and we get 3 times 2s plus 1 plus 2. Then we do our usual rearranging according to the laws of arithmetic, and we get that 6s that's equal to 6s plus 3 from the 3 times 1 plus the 2, and again rearranging that we just get that that's 6s plus 5. Now, what do we want to do? We want to, we're trying to get to the definition of odd, so we want to have it be equal to something plus 1. So again, we factor this out. That's going to be equal to 2 times 3s plus 2 plus 1. That 2 times 2 gives 4 plus 1 is 5. So now, 
so now we know that 3 times n plus 2 is of the form 2 times 3s plus 2, which is an integer, plus 1. So 3n plus 2 is odd. So we've shown the contrapositive is true, that if n is odd, then 3n plus 2 is odd. And so we can conclude that if n, if 3n plus 2 is even, then n is even by using the contrapositive. So to be prepared for our next class, uh, it's important that you really make sure that you mechanically understand how to do both direct proofs and indirect proofs, and you can do simple examples on your own. So again, what I'd suggest is take a couple of examples out of this screencast and try to compare your proof, do your own proof, to those in the video. And make sure that you understand how to justify each step in terms of the previous steps. And especially in the indirect proof, make sure you know how to write down the contrapositive, use a direct proof to prove the contrapositive, and then conclude since the contrapositive is true, the original statement is true. Practice is important here. There's nothing intrinsically difficult about proof. Um, I think sometimes students have a difficult time because they don't practice it enough. So I, again, I encourage you to make sure you go through the theorems that are discussed in the video, make sure you understand how those proofs work, and then um, doing additional proofs will prove to be much easier.